Okay, so we've talked about a lot of concepts in theory, and that these concepts are pretty universal and they apply to every network to various degrees. They may have different names and such, but we're going to start with Twitter. And I want to list a couple of addresses here. Twitter. We have obviously twitter.com. Main login. Then we have business.twitter.com. This is for advanced business <coughs> usage. We've also got analytics.twitter.com. Check your stats. And lastly, we've got tweetdeck.twitter.com. Advanced <coughs> Twitter management. So we'll, we're going to go to twitter.com in just a moment. Uh, we're going to create an account. If you already have one, you can use your existing account. But like I said, I would recommend to create a new account and just to kind of learn this stuff, and then you can delete it later. Question? Sorry, before I open a Twitter account, can I ask, do you know how hard it is to get a Twitter account? Because I know that there's like a Twitter account. It's not that hard. Uh, there is a pretty straightforward process in the settings, and then you can delete it. The only catch is that I believe they sort of give you a grace period of like 10 to 14 days if you change your mind you can come back and your account will still be there but if you delete it and then don't log in for the next two weeks it should go away completely okay. we'll look at these other ones as well uh, these are also very valuable for us although we can't really access those other ones until we have an account uh, but we will have uh, the way to create Twitter ads and, and pay for Twitter, for Twitter reach under business, under analytics, we will be able to check our stats because one of the things that social media has really far in advance compared to traditional media is that we have this great feedback. We can tell who is our audience, what tweets were the best, what times of day were the best on Facebook. People always ask, uh, what's the best time of day to, to, to post on Facebook or Twitter? And you'll find plenty of articles out there that will tell you, make sure that every Monday morning at 8 a.m. you post something on Facebook. Well, that's going to work great for a certain audience that is up at 8 in the morning on a Monday. But my audience is not up at 8 a.m. on a Monday morning. They, you know, they roll out of bed at noon. So there's plenty of articles that tell you when to post and how to post, and they're all right and they're all wrong, because it depends on your audience and your business. Well, the way you figure out what's best for you is to check your analytics. And these networks, for business purposes, they give you all of this great data that tells you your, you know, your gender demographics, your age demographics, their, what they care about most, uh, sports versus finance versus family. They'll, it'll tell you all of this data. Uh, so that's how we can make then informed decisions about what to further post, what to further share and create. So therefore, that article that tells you what to do may not quite apply to you, but once you know how you can figure out your own stuff, you can then be smart about it, and we'll talk about it. Lastly, with Twitter, we've also got something special here called TweetDeck, which is a way to do advanced management, which is a way you look like a really advanced hacker because you're going to have all of these screens zooming by of data telling you what's popular and what's hot and what's replying and all of that. You're going to look like, a, you know, like an advanced computer programmer in the 90s. And all of these screens of information that will help you uh, determine your audience, deal with replies, new followers, and all that great stuff. What we care about at the moment, though, is to either log in or set up an account. So open your web browser. We've got all the popular ones down here. Open any web browser you like. And we'll go to twitter.com.
twitter.com and um, there should be right away join Twitter phone or email or password so all of these networks nowadays ask for either a um, a phone number or an email you can give either or and uh, this is just a unique identifier and and yes we have to talk about in general as the class goes on privacy uh, concerns and such basically you can choose actually in the class to do this or not if you'd like to do this on your own home computer because we are in a public lab and if you're not comfortable putting some of your private information that's fine just follow along do it at home watch the video do it at home that's fine but these computers what they have is a software that when you restart the computer it'll erase everything that you did so there's some safety there question yeah. um, okay. so right now right here this is just for practice this really isn't going to open an account on Twitter this okay. will open an account but it will be a fake account that no one will see and that you can delete when the class is done okay so we can delete all this info when the class is done is that, yeah that, Mm -hmm. It always says we will be using your contacts, your pictures, mm -hmm. your private info, and may even change it. Or I'm not okay with them like contacting them for any particular reason, not on my behalf once I send it out, and mm -hmm. let alone on as, as a third party with me at the end of it. Is there any way to avoid that? Or the way to avoid all of that is to not use them. And unfortunately, that's, you know, take it or leave it, sort of. For personal purposes, yes, definitely. There are a lot of concerns about privacy and how these networks have a lot of reach and power over us that we don't realize. But if we're doing this class in the purpose of business, to uh, market our business and all of that, there is that different way to look at it. For the purposes of learning this, we can make this up completely fake and put everything completely fake to learn this. But unfortunately, these networks are like that, that whatever information we put in there, yes, short answer is, it could be repurposed, reused, resold, etc. And the only way to avoid that is to not use them. And there's kind of no way around that, really. One last question. So, yes. Okay, when it says that we can use your contacts and your pictures, is that solely the pi people we're reaching out on, on this Twitter website, or does that mean they can actually go into our email and extract our pool? There's a, oftentimes there's a screen that asks you to confirm, would you like to share your email to share your contacts? And usually you put no, and it should be OK. When you choose yes, also connect my address book, then basically saying yes, look at my address book and look at all my contacts. Yeah. That's how these networks are, and uh, it's the Wild West at the moment, unfortunately. So the only way that these companies are really going to change their practices is if we, the people, complain, and then maybe if there's some legislation. But at the moment, it is pretty open, and it's not quite to the benefit of the person. The thing about social media a lot of times is that for the person, social media is not that great. But for businesses, it's amazing because I can reach an audience and look at people's contacts and do all of that stuff that for a person I hate, but as a business I love because I can't do this in the real world very easily. Someone sees that billboard and that's it. But on social media, as a business, I could reach an audience a little better and there is that you need to decide how valuable it is for you or not to be that open or not. I heard another question. What's that? What's the question? See what's, uh, how did we get to that? You go to your web browser and you go to twitter.com. Uh, Twitter.com. Twitter. <clears throat> Another question over here? Yes. Yeah, I know it's not a law class, but as a photographer, I have concerns with your purpose and you're taking all the images. Is it registration, copyright registration, all that? Copyrights are another topic in that as soon as you create content, you automatically own the copyright. And yes, there are um, 
details in the terms of service that no one reads but everyone agrees to that says how they will use this content. Uh, I, so am I granting them a license by posting on their server? Uh, I would have to check with each individual network, but I would think to various degrees, yes. We are agreeing to a lot when we <coughs> sign up for these things. And so concerns regarding your intellectual property are a valid one, and your content could be repurposed by the network because we've said, yes, I agree to that. And unfortunately, all of these, like every other one of these contracts, are like basically take it or leave it. You don't want to use this network, then don't use this network. And I, there's not much I can say about that. Yeah. Pretty much, with some variations. Some are a little bit nicer about it, like Tumblr and such is supposed to be better for various purposes. But yeah, this is, again, if we complain enough to these companies, and these companies all have shareholders, and so in theory, they are going to listen more to their shareholders, but then they've got to make profits. So it's like a big old challenge at the moment. Hopefully. Yes. From a business perspective, not really. You don't have to put in all of that information, uh, just the minimal that's required to create the account. Uh, the reason it asks uh, all of that information, again, as a person, we willingly or unwillingly or knowingly or unknowingly, a person often gives a lot of information to these networks. Well, that's great for a business because then I can figure out who to exactly market to and target to. So from our perspective, perhaps we will fill in the minimal required, but just know that a lot of people are filling in the maximal, and that's best for us because we reach the right audience. Yes? Today if I'm creating a fake account, do I need to put my own uh, address, email address, or just be the... You should even be able to put a completely fake email address. It's just that it's going to nag you to... Uh, confirm the address which you can ignore and you should be able to use the network without confirming that fake email <coughs> so for the purposes of the class you can make this up completely just to see how it works then delete it or just move on and never log back in but if I create my own real account, okay, I would not recommend if you're gonna do this for a real account to make it fake uh, yeah. because then that it's somewhere in the terms of service that's when it says you will not put fake account info and then if you're doing this for your real business and you put fake info and they find out they'll shut it down so for a real account I would put real info but for our fake account fake information is fine so I'm gonna make it up I'm gonna say Victor is cool at Victor is cool exactly yeah yeah so then I'm gonna create a Password. I'm going to get started here. <coughs> so, okay, full name. What did I say full name is about? Your business. So, Victor's Bakery. Don't put Victor's Bakery, you can put whatever else. And so then I'm going to uh, keep going. There was, a, there was an item that I forgot to, I pressed enter too quickly, but there was a little check mark there at the bottom uh, that said about you know personalization and marketing and such. So for the moment, again, uh, turning that on or off for a fake account doesn't matter. But for a uh, real account, what that little check mark is telling you is it's not saying if you turn this off, we will not market to you. 
it's all it's just saying if you leave this on we will try to market to you with better content that you might care about like if I'm a restaurant it will try to show me stuff related to food and restaurants if I turn it off it'll just show me random stuff about finance or politics or whatever that I might not care about so it doesn't matter if you leave that on or off because if you turn it off that's not going to stop them from marketing to you phone number I can skip that you can put a phone number that's more for more security if you get if you lose your password you can have a phone number that will help you retrieve your account but there is a skip button down here it's really small they, it's almost like they don't want you to see it but you can then skip now when I do this class I do have to say that there always is a speed bump that happens for a lot of people mine says my account is locked and some of you may already may see that also the speed bump that happens is um, what what Twitter sees is 30 people at once in the same room are trying to create an account that sounds like a Russian hacking farm so some of us were able to get through and some of us not if it does say you're locked in all of that there's nothing we're gonna be able to do at the moment perhaps if you wait 10 minutes five minutes if you wait some amount of time and try again it might let you go through it's just that all of us trying at the same time scares it or confuses it it says I'm locked so if you get to something that says locked you'll just have to take notes follow along and try again in a little while question that's uh, related perhaps as well that uh, again it sees a lot of people at once are trying to log in so it's trying to keep things secure so if it doesn't have a skip button um, you're perhaps stuck at that moment and you might want to try again in a few minutes and it will possibly let you through so again all that we're doing here you would be able to try again at home if you watch the video and in a perfect world this would work for all of us but this always happens you're not doing anything wrong it's just that the network in trying to combat spam and hackers and problems sometimes it's a little too strict and some people can get through and some people can't uh, just as a quick show of hands how many of you were able to get past this initial parts a uh, few people not enough people but okay so if it didn't quite let you go through again just take notes follow along with what I'm doing and then you'll be able to do it eventually if it did go through you're going to see some sort of account with a variety of columns and screens and such for every network you're gonna have like I said those common actions of posting something of getting followers of uh, getting replies and so forth so the screens might look a little different but they all have the same sort of idea so with Twitter we've got this main menu at the top of home moments notifications and messages moments notifications messages and home <coughs> might vary a little bit on the different networks but all of the networks are gonna have some sort of home screen so on the notes here home where you see your tweets and the tweets of who you follow Facebook has something like that it's the wall Google Plus has something like that, Pinterest, they've all got some sort of home screen where you see what you have shared as well as what other people have shared. Um, yes. Um, I might have said, yeah. um, said, what are you interested in? Yeah. We have to check all these things? Um, I, you said it's for our business, so but which one do you discuss? Sports, news, music, entertainment, lifestyle, arts and culture, government, and politics, gaming. You don't have to read them all, but okay. Now, um, what's happening is, let me back up one quick moment. When creating an account, when creating an account, you might have various 
screens to fill in. As a business, you would fill in what is minimal and necessary for the account. If it asks for interests and such, think in terms of what your business is about. I have I have a um, uh, a restaurant, so that's about food. Um, maybe I sell you know healthy food, so there's fitness, that sort of thing. Uh, interests are used are used to tailor what you see on your home screen. So this home screen, as I said, uh, that's going to show you what you've tweeted and what who you follow, what, what they've tweeted. So if it's asking you to check some interests and such, that's what it's going to show you. That's what you're going to sort of subscribe to. That's what you're going to follow. Now the question always happens is, well, I'm a business. Do I need to follow any of these? Do I need to care about interests? I'm going to say here, and then I'll get to it in a, in a deeper level a little later. Um, it's good for your business to follow other accounts or interests because it's useful for inspiration and competitor analysis. Again, I'll cover what these are in more detail a little later. In short, if I'm going to use any of these networks on a long-term basis, I am going to run out of things to say. I'm going to run out of things to tweet. I'm going to run out of things to post. If I follow other accounts, I would get inspiration and see what the competition is doing uh, to help me figure out what should I do this week, what should I post today, what should I post tomorrow. Again, I'll get to it in detail a little bit later. But the short answer, the long answer to that short question is, when you're setting up the account, yes, just fill in the details that it's asking for. All of that can be edited later. But for things like interests and followers, it's good to use, and we'll see in detail why a little later. Question? Yes. Will the interests also bring suggested posts to people, suggested people to follow? Yes. All of these networks are sort of much more about connectivity nowadays. So as I follow accounts, if I follow a couple of finance accounts, it's going to recommend, why don't you also follow these other finance accounts? If I follow food accounts, it'll say, why don't you also follow this? Now, again, as a business, that sounds weird. But as a person, I'm a restaurant. I'm a food business. When a person signs up, they will get suggestions, and I might appear as a suggestion. I might get a follower out of that. So as I set myself up that I'm a food account, people interested in food accounts might see my account, might see my tweets, might follow me, might become the 1% that buy my product, perhaps in the long term. So if I'm posting food photography, I check the interest food, and then I might show up on the restaurants suggested to follow the Short answer. I'm trying to get kind of manipulated. Short answer, yes, uh, but there's going to be many factors to help us get found by the right people. That's one. So these uh, screens, notifications, or uh, moments, curated screen of popular content. The Twitter team, the Twitter company, decides what to put there maybe noteworthy things, maybe fun things, <laughs> maybe interesting things. Um, it's curated, uh, but for us, for business, we can use this also as a way to research what's popular, what's interesting, how can I jump on the bandwagon? And again, we'll talk about these things. There's you know, so many basic things to kind of get into our heads, and then we can go to the intermediate to advanced things. 
And as I said, we cover one network per day, but if we don't cover every single thing about one network, we cover it in a different kind of a way the next time. Because all of these networks have very similar features over and over. So curated screen where we may appear one day or use as inspiration and competitor analysis. Notifications. Uh, all the feedback, a list of all the feedback we get. And I said earlier, the feedback is a like, a reply, a share, etc. This will keep me up to date too with what has happened, who has followed me, who has liked my tweet, who has replied to me, etc. So this is a possible way, a way to keep up with your customers. Customers customers slash followers and a quick little aside here uh, it might be that those two seats over there are empty the, the ladies might not be coming back so if you'd like perhaps if you know, in a few more minutes if they don't come back there seems to be two empty spaces there okay and then for yourself as well if you don't want to use your laptop it looks like those two might be free there if you would like yes so, um it seems like with Twitter that um, a lot of marketing is very popular on it, like such um, word. Are there certain issues that do better with certain businesses that do better with Twitter than others? Um. We'll, we'll talk about the demographics of each network as we go on. Um, I, I don't want to talk about that just yet. But uh, yeah, some networks work better with some audiences and some better in others. But you usually can find the right audience in most networks. Although if you know that, well, if I want a certain kind of audience, I might start with this network. So we're using Twitter uh, as our example at the moment to just kind of talk about social networks in general. And then we'll talk about in detail, of course, which audience perhaps you might find easier on each network. And we've got messages right here. Um, this is uh, like private messages. Private messages. One, uh, well, direct communication with customers. Everything that happens on these networks is pretty public in terms of businesses. You can set these up to communicate only privately, of course. But for a business, you usually want everything public. You want people, you want every possible customer that is valuable to you to find you, and therefore you want to be public. Now, there are uh, some instances where you might want to communicate privately with customers. However, I should put in quotes here, private, because I may be having a private message back and forth with a disgruntled customer that you know they they hate my product I'm going back and forth and something's I'm trying to figure it out I lose my cool and I say something that I shouldn't have everything that you put online basically is not that quite secure and even if we're communicating privately here nothing is to stop a person from taking their phone and taking a photo of that and then sharing it all over the place <laughs> so even though I think I'm doing on something only privately here there's no way to stop that Someone could take out their phone, record that, and put it on their Facebook, and now my embarrassing reply, which I got a little hot-headed, now everyone sees it, and that'll hurt my business. That'll hurt my brand. So for a lot of these things online and social networks, unfortunately, it is basically privacy in quotes. Um, it's very open more than you think, and yes, we are in a kind of a wild west of all of this, that it's... It's 10 years old, but th these networks are still figuring out their problem with abuse, with spam, with hackers, with fake news, with all of that. So uh, it is really only, you don't agree with it, you don't like how it works, there's only one answer to not use it. But you, re you then uh, did not deprive yourself of a possible marketing opportunity. 
and you know I don't want to sound that pessimistic but it has worked a lot very well for lots of businesses I've taught this class for years and years and years and people tell me all the time it's worked very well for them and I, I almost never hear any of these horror stories about my life got hacked that doesn't happen unless you're a big high target you know uh, so uh, we'll keep but it almost, we'll keep it optimistic Yeah, even Target and all the big companies yeah. and everything, yeah. Question over here somewhere? Just out of curiosity, which of the platforms would you say um, minimizes customer comments the most? Because more what I've seen rather than getting hacked or something is just a disgruntled customer and maybe they're getting hot headed and then it blows up in the comments section of, say, Yelp, Facebook, whatever you have. So, if you sort of like as a business owner, you, you want to be able to sort of minimize the customer comment section and be able to get your message out there much bigger. Comments and replies are a double-edged sword because obviously if you do well, you want as many of those positive replies and comments and such. There's always going to be someone disgruntled. And uh, Twitter is one of the ones that's the most open, therefore the least control for you as a business. Facebook can often times be the most closed, which means the most control for the business. So Facebook is often the way to really shape your message as a business. Twitter is often the opposite. And Yelp leans more toward Facebook as well, that it's the most open. Again, it's the double-edged sword. In the real world, you know, I, I want as many people as possible to, to speak out and tell their friends and family what a great business. There's very little I can do to stop in the real world someone to trash talk me. I could try to, you know, litigate them for slander and all of that. In the digital world, it often leans much more toward a lot of openness, but Facebook, often you can control your message a lot better. So these various screens here are going to be important in Twitter, and, <coughs> and they're going to be variations of this on the various networks. Uh, what we also have in all of these networks uh, is something uh, like trending, which on Twitter we see it on the left side, trends for you. Now I don't know. Um, how does it know that is what for me I just set up the account I haven't really filled in much information in the beginning it, it doesn't really know what is important to you it's kind of saying a lot of general things oh look it kind of knows I'm in Chula Vista this is not Chula Vista but it kind of knows the area and things change and stuff Groundhog Day is happening so in the beginning, when the network doesn't know too much about your business, it kind of gives you general trending topics, which you can try to tailor or change right there. The point of these trends is, again, for finding the right audience or reaching the right customer. So trending way to see what's popular to try to reach more people. Then we've got another item at the top, search. Most networks have a search feature. Search within the social network to find customers, topics, etc. Now, in the real world, I kind of have an idea that if I have a certain restaurant, I might put my uh, billboard in a certain part of town, or if I have uh, a, a plumbing business and I want to put it in. Uh, a magazine or a newspaper, I, I kind of have a general idea of how I want to find the right audience. A lot of times people don't know, so they, I'm, I don't know, I'll put my ad all over the place. I'll, I'll find the right audience, maybe. It's smarter in the real world to try to put your message to the right people in the right way. We, be it maybe, you know, if I'm going for an audience that is very tech savvy, that 
all that money that I spent on putting my ad in the yellow pages is what is a waste because that tech savvy audience is never gonna look at the yellow pages they might probably go to yellowpages.com or Google or whatever so in the real world I have a hard time figuring out where my audience is in the digital world even though it is sort of like with a lot of different jargon and nuances and all of that there can be a way to find your audience a lot easier because of these ideas of trending and search let's do this right now if you are able to get into the account uh, let's do this hands-on right here via search let's say that in in Twitter right here I've got my account I barely set it up it's not really ready to be live yet again that's why I have this fake quick account but let's say I have it properly set up and I'll get back to that later and I'm trying to find an audience I'm trying to build followers followers equal customers you know one percent of your followers could be your customers and right now I have zero followers so if we're trying to get followers on all of the networks we're gonna do it in various ways here's one quick way to think about in search I have here the ability to search all over Twitter from the beginning of time of Twitter 10 years ago topics keywords people and actually reach out to them directly so let's say Victor's Bakery I'm gonna search for organic cookies as I start typing some sort of topic it may pop up to give me various results various um, uh, suggestions I'm gonna ignore those for the moment I'll just type organic cookies and press enter and what that does is it searches all over Twitter for people tweeting about or people related to organic cookies so you see all of these networks will have some sort of result of your search term it'll show it in different sorts of ways in Twitter it says these are the top tweets related to organic cookies based on its algorithm that it thinks this is a top tweet a top post I can see what are the latest tweets being published regarding organic cookies who are people that have an account that seem to be about organic cookies what are photos videos news or broadcasts about that topic I'm showing this to you right now in terms of a business searching for a topic if you flip it around a person searching for a topic finding your business so if I set myself up to be found via these keywords this is how I can start to build an audience people will search topics and if my account is about that topic or tweets about that topic I may be found and get the four reactions which again were like reply retweet follow and then the ultimate one by like in the real world if I was interested in something um, you know in the old days I would go to the phone book and I'd go to the section of lawyers I'm searching the phone book for a lawyer I'm looking at their ads I see an ad that is just one simple line of text and then I see another ad that's a full page beautiful ad with color probably because of the prettier one I'm gonna call that lawyer the one that's just one tiny little line subconsciously or consciously I might not give them a call <coughs> uh, in the real world marketing you know flashiness and such really helps it gets your attention and people then take the bait in the digital world we have that version as well people are going to search in these networks in Twitter in Facebook in snapchat and in Instagram 
to find something that they care about. So if my account, my business's account on Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, whatever, is about that topic, I may be found. I hopefully then get follows, which then hopefully lead, leads to sales. Yes? Does that depend like on a keyword, like if you use, I don't know, say baked goods or cookies or whatever? And I picked one keyword right now of organic cookies, and it gave me lots of results. I may also search for, you know, uh, vegan baked goods, and I get other results. So yes, it depends on your keywords. It depends on all of your content. Uh, I'm not going to, as I'll show in a moment, I I'm not going to simply like try to list a list of 20 keywords to hopefully get found by. That will only get you so far, and it's not far enough. It's your content that you're going to get found by, your content that you create on a regular basis, because probably as I'm talking, more and more of these tweets appear. They keep constantly appearing. People keep constantly tweeting. So even though I spent all day long yesterday tweeting about three topics, what did I do today? What did I do next week? What did I do next month? So it's going to be a constant updating and being on top of it about these topics, these keywords that hopefully helps me get found. Yes? And the keywords are just embedded in your text. It's not like an Instagram hashtag. Or it's just basically what's in your text. We're going to talk about hashtags also, and hashtags uh, originated pretty much on Instagram. Uh, but at the moment, I'm searching for a plain old keyword. I'm not searching for a hashtag. And there are differences, and we'll talk about the differences between keywords and hashtags, of course. But as I'm browsing here, do you see that some of these do stand out? Organic, cookie, cookie organic. The ones that stand out, those words are actually in someone's tweet. And there's a couple of them that don't have that anywhere. I don't see that anywhere. But oh, this one does say promoted. So this goes into something we'll talk about later, that you can also pay the networks for visibility, just like I would pay the networks for, uh, just like I would pay to put more billboards, just like I would pay more TV stations to put my, my, my message out there. So in the particular search I did right now, yeah, it matters that those keywords are embedded in the tweet. And we'll also talk about the hashtags and other things. Sure yeah. Yes? Um, um, will we get a link in the, in the text when we tweet? And will, that, will we link back to our website? When we create tweets, we'll see that, yes, we'll be able to have text, pictures, links, anything we want, basically. So a lot of these are doing it that way, in that there's a nice enticing picture, there's some text here about the picture, and then there's also a link. So they seem to be doing it right, and this is how we would often do it, and we'll do it you know, a little later too, that yeah, you'd want to promote what you're talking about and have a link to why not buy it. Not really the, you mean, okay, wait, you mean on the website, not on Twitter? I want to help the search results say in Google by linking from Twitter to our website. Will it give us... Oh, so for SEO and such. Um, there is a sort of a value to that. Um, there is a value of getting social network traffic from your site back to your site to some degree. But SEO is a big ball of wax, and part of getting traffic back to your website from social networks does help but there are many other things as well that we need to do and that's the topic for the other class that I teach the SEO class so one more question so do I just when I go on there do I just start liking like what I think are um, valid companies or valid tweets do I just start uh, no do no we'll get into those details about what uh, how to use it more effectively. There's a lot of topics swirling around, but yeah, we're gonna get to each of them and uh, just doing that, no, I would not recommend that. Another question over here, hand I saw, maybe? No? Okay, so focusing at the moment on searching, uh, all of the networks have some sort of aspect like this, and as a business, it has a value, but as a person, it has another value. I'll come back to it as a business in a moment. 
But what I want to show you here is that the idea that people, regular old people, are going to be searching these social networks. I want to find something funny, I'm hungry, I find something interesting, people are going to search. So if my account is about a topic, I may be found. Well, there's so many possible ways that people could be searching, of course. So social networks are most effective. when the topic of your account is obvious and the content you share is consistent. Consistency is consistency is being active on the networks on a regular basis beginner, intermediate, advanced. These are some general goals for a beginner, an intermediate, or an advanced user of all of these networks. Um, these can be increased and decreased. But, you know, as a beginner, one tweet per week. So you have to have something to share or something to say once a week as a beginner. What to share, how to share, we'll cover that of course, but basic starting point. Question in the back? Yeah, I, so I noticed you said last year there's a lot of pictures on Twitter now. So this idea of like putting a picture on, on Twitter and then putting the same picture on Instagram, mm -hmm. does that look bad? Uh, on reusing content. Let me get back to that. That's a big answer. Let me get back to that. Uh, intermediate usage of Twitter uh, two to three times per day, or per week, sorry, per week. So we've got seven whole days, two to three or so times per week. We're going to share something advanced every day seven days a week you can take vacations I guess but the big accounts that have a lot of followers they're active very often because the consumer the person that's on Twitter that's on Facebook etc they want to see something they want to see something new something fun interesting something tasty maybe I'll buy something once in a while but I want to see stuff because it's free so as the business uh, the once a week is a very good starting point. This week on Monday, I'm going to post a picture of my of my cupcake and a little text and a link. Next week, then I'll put one on Wednesday at 7 o'clock, something else. The week after that, I'll put something on Saturday, um, you know, at 10 a.m. and a video, whatever. I'm active. I'm putting something on a regular basis, the beginner level, because... Twitter is on all day long. Facebook is on all day long. People have Instagram on their phone all the time. They're checking it all the time. There's always something new all the time. So you can fall out of people's uh, perception kind of easily. So when you're active, your content shows up on their home screen a little more often. They see that tweet. They see that photo. They see their, that product they might think about buying. The more active you are, the more they see your content to stay in their visibility. Because a person can follow one or a thousand accounts. I'm following a thousand accounts, I'm constantly seeing tweets. You posted a week ago, might as well have been a year ago if I'm following a thousand accounts. So it is a lot of work. But as a beginner of once a week, I think it's a very good goal. And then, as I said, I'm, I'm going to run out of things to tweet about. That's why I said earlier, your business account, it's good that your business account follows other relevant accounts, other food-related accounts, other ancillary food-related accounts or interests, because then I can see what others are doing. I can see what Betty Crocker is doing. I can see what McDonald's is doing. 
I can get inspiration of what they're doing for me to do a version of it. Because being this active requires a lot of content, it's OK to see what others are doing and then do your version of it. Question. Yes, how do you quantify community and advancement talent? Like how many followers do you need to be in either category? We, don't, we can't really quantify it that way, because for some accounts, um, having 10 followers is enough. And for other accounts, 1,000 is barely enough. So uh, I'm not quite quantifying how many followers per per level here. I'm just saying for how active do you want to be to try to reach more followers. The more active that you are, the more followers you can get. I can't say how many and all of that. It depends on your audience, your product, and your competition and all of that. I'm just saying here, these are levels of activity that I would think about for these different levels. So I have to be active to some amount and then do your version of it. So don't steal someone else's picture or text verbatim. You, you see a great photo, and uh, anything online basically can be copied. And that, again, is if you don't want your picture stolen online, don't put them online. And that is a very, you know, extreme answer to that but that's how the internet is and that's how it was designed the idea was it's gonna be very open and sharing we're all gonna have a good time but you know it hasn't quite worked out that way and the infrastructure of it is that yeah things could easily be copied that photo that I'm trying to sell as a wedding photographer could be copied and passed over to all of the relatives and they didn't pay you you were supposed to sell them a package of photography to everyone well they all got a copy of it so here I'm saying for you as the business, don't steal someone else's content uh, because that is intellectual property. In the real world, I can probably agree that this phone here, yeah, it's probably worth $300, $600. I can believe a physical thing has a value because it's a physical thing, it's technology, etc. Digitally, a lot of times people don't believe that things have a value. You can buy a photo for $5, $5,000. I've seen, because I also deal with a lot of graphic design and, and uh, graphics and all of that, you can buy a font for $2,000. You can buy a font that costs more than your computer. That is real because it's an intellectual property. It's someone that they created that has a value that is being sold. So for you not to get into any trouble, don't steal other people's photos. Don't borrow their text. And yes, there's the murky grounds of uh, fair use and transformative works and all of that. Don't worry about it. Short answer, don't steal other people's work. Uh, you know, the courts will decide if you stole it or not. So why get into that? Shoot your own photos. Write your own text. Look at someone else's tweets and get an idea of what to do, but don't take it exactly as it is there. Worst case scenario, you know, they, they send you an email and say, please remove this, we own it. Worser case scenario is they send you an, a, a letter from a lawyer with damages, and worstest case scenario is they say, see you in court, you owe us $5,000. So create your own content always. So then it's a lot to do inspiration from other accounts to help you do it. This applies to all the networks. So you want to be consistent, you want to uh, publish stuff on a regular basis, uh, you want to use the search to get ideas of what others are doing. Let, let me do another topic here. San Diego Bakery. I'm a bakery in San Diego. Are there other bakeries in San Diego on Twitter? There's at least one right here, Baby Cakes San Diego. I can go here under People. This will also show businesses. Ba Baby Cakes San Diego, Twigs and Bakery and Coffee, VG Donut and Bakery, Coastal North County San Diego, Le Parfait. 
So I see these different accounts here related to bakeries, related to this topic in this area of San Diego. So this is again for my idea of inspiration. Um, I can look at any one of these accounts. I can click on their icon. They haven't tweeted since November 14th, or November 2014th, that is. Maybe they gave up on Twitter here. Uh, let's see over here. Baby Cakes San Diego since November 2017. So if I see that a lot of these bakeries haven't done it in a while, it may be that... Um, it may be that that's good for me because then I have less competition. It may be that they're not finding their audience on Twitter. It may be that they're over on Facebook. So I may um, have good results because I don't have as much competition. I'm a San Diego bakery. I'm going to be active. They're not. All of these networks are global, but all of these networks can also be tailored to an, a, a location. Usually you get that via the paid versions. So I get like the full reach of everyone for free, and then the paid will let me target specific areas and demographics. So. We're going to hit search over and over and over on all of these networks. I'm touching on it for just a moment in Twitter. Um, we're going to hit trending topics over and over on all of the networks. Let me look at it for a moment on, on Twitter. On trends, here on the home screen, I see some that look like a regular word, Chula Vista, and some that look a little different with the hash mark the number symbol, the pound sign, hashtag. So, um, trends and search can be um, regular keywords. hashtags. A regular keyword can have spaces and special characters. Hashtags, no spaces, special characters, and must have a hash mark, the pound symbol. They can look very, very, very similar, and you can almost say, like, what's the difference? There are, there are nuances, uh, but the hashtag is, is um, sort of like a, a little simple description of what the tweet is about, what that particular tweet, what that particular message is. We've got hashtags on Instagram, on Twitter, even Facebook, uh, although no one really uses them on Facebook, but they're on Facebook, Google+. Plus. All of them have the idea of the hashtag, although it's strongest on Twitter and Instagram. And so a keyword would be like organic cookies. And then a hashtag would be organic cookies. Obviously no spaces. It's got the hash mark. You could do capitalization. That's valid as well. So if I change the search, are the searches case this, the search then does matter, yes, because if you have the word organic cookies, someone may find you simply because of the word organic. They were looking for organic chemistry, and they might have found you because you had the keyword organic cookies. It hit one of the words. But if a person searches for the hashtag organic cookies, it will only display organic cookie results. 
This is one of the big reasons why you would use one versus the other. If you want people to find you exactly on one particular keyword, you want to use a hashtag. If you kind of want people to find you in a kind of a broader sense, you can use keywords with spaces. Yes. Yes. I'm so confused. Like back in the days when all this was started, you could go under Google and then enter whatever topic you wanted to look up on, and mm -hmm. then hit the question mark, and that would basically open up anything and everything that had to do with whatever words you you typed. Mm -hmm. So is that what you're saying? You're saying as far as the hashtag symbol? No, first of all, we're talking about Google. You're talking about Google. We're not. This is all searching inside of Twitter only. Okay. So if I go over to Google and put in one of these kinds of searches, I'm going to get results from all over the place. Facebook, Twitter, my website, all over the place. The, this right now matters only in Twitter or in Facebook or in Pinterest. So these keywords that I'm going to search for, either this one or the hashtag, will only matter in the network. You'll only get results from the network you're in. Yes? I just have my question. I, I, I could point with the organic search, but uh, are they case sensitive? Is what I'm, so if you use the caps, does the person not get it if they don't? No, that, that sort of case sensitivity doesn't matter. Um, no, no, no case sensitivity. Yes. So then is it beneficial to make sure you have keywords in your tweet? And then, like, would you double that with a hashtag? Are you trying to... That's what I'm trying to... No. On this, you want to think about kind of one or the other. Um, one, one or the other, you don't have to put both. But if it makes sense to put both, that's OK. Uh, for example, if I was going to create a brand new tweet that says, on sale now our organic cookies are to die for. And then I've got a link, victorsbakery.com cookie. And then I put the hashtag organic cookie. It made sense that I mentioned both of them here. But I wouldn't try to force both ways into a tweet if it's not necessary. I could say right now, uh, I could say on sale now, all our cookies are to die for. That's fine. Both of those tweets are fine. It's except that people, if they searched for organic cookies, this tweet might be found because I had the word cookies. Uh, if they had searched for organic chemistry, my tweet would not be found because I don't have organic as a regular word. I have it as a hashtag. So people have to search for it this way. And usually people prefer the hashtag because then, yeah, it's a specific keyword as one word that people will search for that instead of a little bit more of a scattershot search of a keyword. Uh, I think there was a question over here first. Uh, Do you answer my question? OK. And then, yes. Do you have more than one person tweet on, on one account? More than one person can tweet in one account, which is a little advanced, and you can do that in TweetDeck. More than one person can log in and manage one account, and you do it via TweetDeck. Okay, by TweetDeck. Mm -hmm. So if you're, uh, so if your business is like, I tweet one and she tweets one on my same account. Exactly. More than one person. Well, everyone's going to log in with their own password, but they're all managing the same one Twitter account. Oh, okay. So if my goal is that every week I'm going to tweet something new, I've got like three or four other people that work for me. Well, I'm going to tweet on Monday, and Janet is going to tweet next week, and Bill is going to tweet next week, and we're going to rotate that way. So someone is doing it. Someone is active on the account every week. Well, we do that by people logging into the one Twitter account with their own password in TweetDeck. Yeah. So that's a way to keep it fresh and be active. More people helping you on the account. Mm -hmm. Question. So in point of consistency, it's the number of times per week, not necessarily always on Tuesday, always on Thursday, always on Sunday. Exactly. Um, 
there's a little bit of value to being consistent on every single certain day and time sure uh, let's say I have you know uh, let's say I'm trying to make money on on YouTube I have a show on YouTube and I always publish it at a certain time therefore I'm gonna tweet an hour before every time to remind people the shows coming up so for that I would want to be very consistent there but for most of us <coughs> as long as we are active some time of the week to keep on people's radar doesn't matter the day and time as long as I do it every week question here sorry um, that, uh, where you did the hashtag uh, organic cookies mm -hmm. um, is uh, another way that that's available for search if, if you use uh, quotes that would con uh, contain the words uh, in the conjunction in other words uh, where you just did a search, you did organic cookies. So it showed up as uh, any, any uh, following that had organic and cookies would show up. But when you did a hashtag for organic cookies, uh, it had to be in that order, in that sequence. There are, space. there are advanced ways to search, definitely. Uh, in quotes like this, should give you results that have it organic cookies exactly in that order because we've d done it in quotes, I want it exactly like this. So yes, that will give different results than like that. Okay. And I forgot to add one more item here to the notes. Uh, we have all of these websites. There's another one. Search.twitter.com. Here is where you can go to advanced search. This is where you can search a certain keyword or hashtag in a certain day of the week, in a certain point in time up to 10 years ago. This is where I can search, search for organic cookies, but not organic pot cookies, right? I want to exclude some words and include some words. So advanced search would be, a, in Twitter search here, would be a way to really get what you want. So just to help me be a little bit confused, when we have the hashtag, it, it covers organic cookies, but the software must be incredibly sophisticated to understand the word organic and cookies are two separate items. Whereas if you had a phrase that had a lot of different words into it, how could we then pick out those different words? Well, if you do hashtag organic cookies, it's going to be run together, right. with no spaces, so it will look all over Twitter for the exact match of hash mark organic cookies, no space. So it will find that exact hashtag because it has no spaces and such. Once you start to put in a space, then it thinks, okay, let's find things that say organic and things that say cookie. So in a sense, it's not that smart because it's going to show you too much. So doing the hashtags really narrows it down to a specific <coughs> topic. Yes? You can kind of think about it as a title. This is the title of this particular tweet. This is the topic of this particular tweet. It's just that it's written in a very specific way because I want people that are searching for this exact topic to find me. If they search for organic cookies with a space, a lot of stuff might show up that doesn't matter. So people focus on having a hashtag which gives a topic of a tweet that says that's what this tweet is about, so how, that's how you can find me. And you will it's, it's, it's yes and no depending on Google's mood. It used to be that you can search on Google a specific hashtag and you would get results on Twitter. Then Google made their own social network, Google Plus, so then they stopped showing Twitter results. But then very recently, I think they're showing Twitter results again. So I wouldn't rely on using a search engine like Google or Bing or Yahoo to search hashtags. I would use the search within the network within Twitter, within Pinterest, searching in the network to find what you want instead of a big, broad, global search. Yes? How effective is it within your, your tweet, if you will, adding multiple hashtags? That's what I was about to say here. So how many is a good amount of hashtags? Hashtags. I would say less then three is good. 
So I could do a tweet that says organic cookies, hashtag San Diego Bakery, hashtag tasty, hashtag yummy. Well, when you, when you get to a certain point, you know, you have a limit to the amount of text that you can put into a tweet. And it used to be 140, so the more of these hashtags that you put in, the less space that you have for your real message. Well, now that we've got double the space, 280, you know, we still have a limited amount of space to add something. But at a certain point, too many hashtags looks like a spammer. Too many hashtags looks like someone trying to put every single keyword out there to get found, and that doesn't look good. And also the, the, the Twitter algorithm penalizes you at a certain point if you put too many. Because there's so much spam and junk on all of these networks, the networks are constantly trying to fight the spammers. One thing a spammer does is put 20 hashtags in, in hopes that one of those hashtags lands a, lands a viewer or a follower. So I'm going to say three or less are going to be very good for a tweet. So the idea being, like, let's say I wanted to find you. Mm -hmm. I would type in hashtag tasty and your Victor's Bakery would pop up. All of the tweets all over the world that are using the hashtag tasty may appear. Right. But yours would too. If I use the hashtag, yeah. So, um, three or less hashtags on a tweet is good. More than that looks like spam. More than that might penalize you, and you don't appear on the search results. Uh, so be careful about that. If you can sort of put, like, what's the topic of this tweet succinctly in one hashtag, that's fine. In two, that's okay. Three, I wouldn't do more because after that it looks spammy. Yes? Is that rule of thumb just for Twitter? No, I would do that on all the networks. Even Instagram? Uh, Instagram, I think, allows you to put up to 30, but the ones that really matter are within the first 10 for Instagram. So just as a safe number of three all around is fine, but there are different nuances on some networks where a little bit more. So, um, you know, Instagram, perhaps up to 10, but at a certain point, yeah, that's also starting to look too spammy, too needy, too trying to game the system. And when you try to do that and the networks feel that you're gaming the system, it, they're gonna penalize you. And all of these networks nowadays have to be under the doctrine of guilty until proven innocent. There's so much spam, so much junk, they'd rather shut you down than have you plead your case about why, whoops, I didn't mean it, I, I'm, I'm just learning. They'll just shut down your account because they have to deal with so much junk. So on your tweets, our goals, once a week, with at least one hashtag, to try to get followers using search to get inspiration and do research. We are constantly trying to get people's attention on all social networks. Twitter has around 330 million users. Um, LinkedIn has like 500 million. Pinterest is also like at 200 million. Um, Instagram, they've gone like to 600 million now. And uh, Facebook is now over 2 billion. Billion, not million, 2 billion users on Facebook. The population of the world is like 6 billion, 6.5 billion, something like that. So a lot of people use Facebook. And again, if people, if all of this is like so much to learn, so much to do, the short answer is, yeah, you get on Facebook. But that's a longer answer, and that's a double-edged sword, which we'll cover when we get to Facebook. But as we do these different networks, we get an idea of how social network works, how social networking works in general, tactics and tips that work on all the networks that you can then apply in different ones. Um, yeah. If you had uh, uh, your business, uh, would you rather just put it on Facebook since it gets like 
all these billions of people? Well, like I said, that's, um, that's a deeper topic. The short answer, yes. But the long answer is that's why we're going to spend one whole day on Facebook when we get to it. Uh, because there are potentially a lot of people, but perhaps there's too many people, and it's going to be harder for me to stand out and get people's attention. So then that's why we have to do uh, a day on Facebook where we talk about how to use it most effectively. Here on Twitter, um, we talked about searching and trends and such. Okay, uh, trends, Friday feeling, hashtag Friday feeling. One way why trends and such might be useful is that when you click on any of these, uh, what, what happens here is you get tweets uh, from people all over the place that are uh, using that hashtag. And yeah, some of them are going to be you know, completely like a, like a spam sort of message, like right here. I can tell that probably that's spam because all that they did was they just jumped on the bandwagon of fashion and Friday feeling hashtag. They didn't even say like this is for sale or here's our new handbag or whatever. They just kind of blasted out a tweet without any, any real effort, but they put a couple of hashtags and it appeared for me. And some amount of people will say, hey, that does look nice. Let me click there and buy it. And some people will say, that's spam. I'm, I'm moving on. So there's all of these kinds of audiences and, and skill levels that some will see something and actually like it and enjoy it and follow through. And some perhaps more savvy will say, this is not for me. I'm, I'm going to move on. But these hashtags that appear, in the moment that I've been speaking, 19 more tweets have appeared. And hopefully, uh, you know, this is a public forum, so hopefully nothing offensive appears here, but it is all completely, um, you know, open and everyone. But, you know, 19 more messages have, have, uh, have appeared since I've been talking. So this is the constant changing of and the updating of, what, um, of what, what's on Twitter. So you can look at these hashtags as a possible way to... Um, see what's popular, what people are tweeting about, and what I could possibly apply to my tweets if they make sense. So, um, Groundhog Day. Maybe I'm doing a Groundhog Day sale at Victor's Bakery. So it would make sense to say today, in honor of Groundhog Day, in honor of hashtag Groundhog Day, we're selling everything 10% off. Click here to get the to get the coupon. So my tweet would appear amongst all of those that are currently tweeting about Groundhog Day. But because if it is popular, it's going to scroll by because everyone's being active with that particular tweet, uh, that hashtag, I mean. We can use hashtags to be found by the right people, our audience, our customers. so that we get the four reactions, likes, replies, retweets, or follows, so that we get the four reactions, so that it leads us toward the ultimate goal, a sale. Ultimately, I'm spending all my time on all of these networks because I'm trying to get a result. I'm trying to make a sale. And again, I'm saying again that all of what I talk about is business, product, etc. But whatever your purpose is online, it still applies. So if I've got Victor's Bakery on Main Street, I'm trying to sell cupcakes. I'm not going to sell a cupcake digitally. They have to come to the store and buy the cupcake. Let's say I don't have an online store yet. They have to come to the store. That, that limits things. They have to be in San Diego. They have to be within you know, 10 miles of my business, whatever. So I have to use all of social media the best way I can to reach a local audience that cares about baked goods, that cares about you know, organic ingredient baked goods, or you know, allergy-friendly baked goods, or whatever, or you know, uh, traditional grandma's style uh, cookies. I have to use all of social media, all the possible social media channels, and put all my effort, or as much as I have to muster, to reach an audience on these networks for the ultimate goal to make those sales. 
in the meantime I have to do all of these things in between about getting followers posting on these accounts replying to people doing all of that customer service stuff so on the one hand social media all of it is free to start off with and it can be very effective but it is a lot of effort a lot of time and effort and work that's why there is the the job of social media marketer you hire someone to run your social media you pay them whatever wage they run your social media to try to get you this attention on social media for the ultimate goal of a sale question not exactly people reply or sort of comment on individual tweets that you make not on your main account they reply to individual tweets and so there's still a lot of nuances about what to do on Twitter and how to do it although we're getting close to the end of the day and we didn't take our second break so um, let's uh, let's let's do a little bit of um, Q&A obviously yes there is still a lot that we can talk about here and as I said if we don't quite get to something uh, if we don't get to something on Twitter we'll get a version of it when we talk about Facebook and and, and the rest um, so questions on on Twitter social media in general Armin um, okay well that, that's different if you follow someone you can unfollow if someone follows you, that's slightly different. Let's say I followed someone over here. You know, there's a button that says that says to follow. So let's just say I'll follow someone randomly. If I don't see them anymore, I can always go back to uh, my profile uh, to see who I'm following. And there's going to be a button that says unfollow. Say what? Un unfollow? unfollow yes so whoever I followed you know if I followed them that button will then say unfollow mm -hmm. I can unfollow whoever I okay. I follow another question over here yes when would you use the at symbol is that so that you direct it you're trying to direct it to the site or you're trying to direct it to an account yes so um, every uh, tweet by default goes out public to everyone to all your followers if someone follows me they've chosen to, to see my tweets so on their home screen they're gonna see my tweets now what I could do is direct sort of like direct the tweet toward someone or more than one person if you at name in the tweet it notifies a specific account so up here where I had on sale now all our cookies are to die for I could have also then said at Victor at Janet at San Diego City College you know whatever their Twitter name is their username if I include at and their Twitter name there what happens is then everyone could see it still that follows me but then I'm sort of alerting those three specific accounts hey I'm talking to you so if that's if that's true then that's amazing I could then direct this to everyone UCSD you need to know about this and Harvard everyone needs to know about this well, again, this is like the hashtags that at a certain point it's spam. At a certain point you're trying too hard and you're trying to show too many people your, your tweet and, the, and the, the network itself could penalize you for that because that's what spammers do. They try to blast out to everyone specifically. So if you at name, yeah. The reason, reason I ask is I've had what I'm most important is Excuse me, sites say to get feature include at and the name. And I just didn't really so, so that basically says if I post a photo and I want to get featured by that by that site, 
to put in my text somewhere or in my hashtags at and their name that will notify them that I posted something and then take a look at it to say if they want a feature. Decide if they want a feature, exactly. You As opposed to just hashtagging them, which doesn't give them a notification. It just shows up on their feed along with 9,000 other images. Yeah, when you at name them, when you mention them like that, they get more of the notification that you're trying to talk to them directly. They then could decide to feature you, and that's a big if, oftentimes. If I'm trying to mention like a big account, they are already so inundated with so many people trying to interact with them that they probably won't see you. The accounts that are so big, you know, they, they have to filter their, their messages or ignore them completely so that they can stay sane. So yeah, that tip that you got does have a value, but the problem with it is you have to decide who is going to be valuable for me to mention. How big are they? Are they going to ignore me? Are they like one level above me that could help me? And a lot of times what happens is I'm trying to get featured by someone else. Yeah, great. But what's in it for them to feature me? Obviously for me, I would love for them to help me out, but then what's in it for them to help me out? Usually not much because I'm at a lower strata than them. So it is a possible tactic to try to mention other accounts to help you out somehow. But again, if I'm tweeting to these big accounts that they, they've got their own thing going on, it's going to be worthless and it's going to look like spam that I'm trying to reach out to so many. If I'm trying to reach people that are kind of a similar level than me, it may work. You might just take it from five million posts to one million. Maybe, yeah. I have to settle for a million. Yeah. So there are all of these nuances that we can do on these other networks. We can do something like that on Instagram and Pinterest and Facebook and such when, when we get to that. And uh, there is using this all in terms of like uh, to everyone, to specific accounts, via hashtags and keywords and such. And we'll see how that fully works as time goes on. Uh, more questions here? Yeah. Um. That is a big answer, and that's basically the point of the whole three months. But uh, the short answer is that, yeah, your audience uh, is probably on a certain network. And as we do an overview of the different networks, you kind of figure out your audience. And um, like the character of each network varies. Some skews towards a younger audience, some toward a techie audience, some toward a female audience, some toward a male audience. I'm not going to give those answers away just yet. And there's plenty of articles in the think pieces out there that will tell you that. Uh, I will touch on that a little later. Uh, but in the beginning, what I want to do is kind of get a survey of all of them. Uh, then we can decide which is the most effective for us for our particular audience. Okay, so as we wind down, what we're going to do here is these notes. I'm going to put these notes in the network folder. I'll remind you where the network folder is in just a moment. This Twitter account, if you managed to create one, great. If not, that's fine. I would recommend at home then to try to create an account. There's still plenty more that we can talk about regarding Twitter, of course. But when we come back next time and we talk about another network, we will see how what that network is about is similar to what this network is about with some nuances. The screens may be different and such, but they're all going to have notifications. They're all going to have trends. They're all going to have keywords and hashtags. It's just that you tweet on Twitter, you pin on Pinterest, you snap on Snapchat, whatever they call it. So we will see those details as we get there. Quick question? Um, at any point during the, the rest of the course, do you go more into business Twitter? Or is specifically about features that would be in there, or same with the analytics, Twitter, 
I will because um, all of the networks can be used for personal or for business and right now I didn't really differentiate between the two that much but yes I will be covering much more on the focus on business and we will touch back on Twitter as well but we will see how it makes sense also on other networks yes you said make a, uh, uh, make a count for the class yeah, you can do that. You can make uh, you can make it up completely and just use it just to kind of learn it. And then uh, if 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 you did manage to create one over on uh, the settings, uh, there is a setting at the very bottom here somewhere. Deactivate your account. So whatever we create here, we will be able to delete it, and it'll go away in like two weeks or something. Mm -hmm. So just for the purposes of learning this, we can make it all up fake, and then we can um, use it and then delete it. So we could apply this to an account that does exist, but as you learn this, it might be better to do it and learn it and make mistakes on a fake account, and then later, once we're more savvy about it, apply it to a real account. So... So it's supposed to be create a fake account or a real 